Welcome to my review of Mashal Chapter 59, Mash Bernadette and the Magical Maestro and we start this chapter off with a color page with Mash on the left and Margaret on the right, and after that we get into the chapter proper with Mash facing down Margaret with his fists raised and his feet spread wide apart ready for whatever offense Margaret might throw his way. And as we get small panels dedicated to Wahlberg, Caldo and Lance who are watching from their respective position in the stands. And the match starts off with Margaret telling Mash to show him what he is capable of as he launches what looks like a mass of swirling music paper covered in notes with a spell called Sounds Far. Mash draws back his fist and attempts to punch the attack away as he has managed to do with almost all attacks directly aimed at him only for his fist and entire arm to phase right through the material as a sound violently assaults his ears causing blood to erupt from his eardrums and visible cause his balance to become distorted as he shakes slightly in place. Margaret comments how his spells are more than just parlor tricks, so a simple punch will not be enough to deal with them. Of course, Mash cannot currently hear him at that moment, asking him to repeat himself, while acting like having his eardrums explode wasn't affecting him at all, making a point to show that even when injured Mash has the strength to play it off as nothing major. Margaret however is not impressed by Mash's lack of reaction and instead comments on how Mash is a poor match against him, before attacking with the exact same spell yet again. He is not wrong, Mash has no way of directly countering Margaret's sound-based attacks that have been displayed so far. Although he could probably attempt something like clapping his hands together really loudly, but there is no guarantee such a simple technique would affect Margaret's malicious melody. Beyond that we are shown in the next scene that when Mash attempts to block the attack with raised arms he gets once more violently shaken as blood bursts from his nose. This to me implies that while Margaret's magic might be music based it doesn't need to be heard in order to affect his targets and instead acts on the vibrations which can internally damage a target by messing with their internals which are quite squishy. Mash even says himself that he can't block it as the pain comes from inside himself and the crowd rightly assumes that this fight is going to be a slaughter with Margaret's obvious counter to Mash's main strength. Margaret upon seeing Mash being once more shaken by his attack says that he should have expected to be let down, but still, it is sad and his expression does almost seem melancholic with the way his eyes droop, maybe he really did expect something greater from Mash. As he raises his hands like a conductor, he tells Mash that he wasn't the tartar sauce he was seeking, before casting sounds surround orchestra. This has the result of summoning several large gramophones surrounding Mash on all sides, as Margaret speaks of this being the final Mash notices that a pebble on ground is beginning to shake violently as if an earthquake was happening, right before the ground between the gramophones is pulverized by the sound causing an explosion. Finn and Dot shout out for Mash while Lance beside them appears less panicked and more intrigued while Caldo watches on silently. As dust and smoke cover the arena people in the crowd begin to speak of how Mash didn't stand a chance, with Margaret being a genius after all. Uta can be seen in his own panel pushing up his glasses with what I can only assume is a pleased expression on his face, while Caldo thinks to himself on how Margaret didn't even have to go all out to finish the match, perhaps recognizing that things are not quite as finished as they might first appear. As Margaret gets a surprise when he finds Mash haven't disappeared from the center of his attack, causing the crowd to collectively cry out in surprise as something at that very moment grabs hold of Margaret's ankle and drags him down into the ground, burying him up to his neck, the expression he on his face, filled with surprise speaks to just how confident he was that the match was already over and doubted Mash's ability to come back from it. Meanwhile the crowds are questioning how he got buried until Mash emerges from beneath the ground. Margaret, still in shock says about how Mash avoided his reverberations and I am not certain if it is him asking how or the crowd, if it is him however, this happily points to the fact that Margaret was either unaware of his own weakness or too arrogant to believe someone could turn it against him in such a situation, which would be an interesting flaw for him to possess. But anyway, Finn explains what happened for us in case anyone did not understand. Right before the spell managed to hit him Mash dug himself into the ground. 
because sound waves are vibrations and vibrations get weaker when they meet with an obstacle. Mash was able to avoid being devastated by the attackers it acted as a dampener, Finn comments on how freaky it is Mash moved faster than sound, most likely significantly faster given how according to Finn himself he dodged just before the attack hit and dug deep enough to avoid being pulverized. But to me what is actually freaky is just how Finn was so easily able to spot and grasp the situation, even when Mash was obscured and moving at superhuman speeds, he was capable of perceiving everything. It could easily just be the author using Finn as an exposition device, but it is consistently Finn who notices these things and is capable of determining what happened when others who seem more combat savvy or experienced fail to do so. Mark my words if we get to see Finn's match we might actually get a surprise from our analytical friend. Anyway, back to the actual chapter, Mash draws back his left leg, calling out his patented muscle magic once again, this time using quadriceps magic, and as the crowd is filled with shock and perhaps a bit of fear, Mash hits Margaret Square in the face with what he calls the guillotine kick, which to me just looks like he kicked a football with his toes. The force of the collision is strong enough to rip Margaret free from the ground he was buried into and launch him across the arena tumbling as he hits the ground. The onlookers can hardly believe what they are seeing, as the announcer declares that Mash took out Margaret with one mighty blow, but Mash isn't done yet as he leaps on top of his downed opponent, taking the initiative to attack his downed enemy. And as everyone is left in shock, questioning if it's okay to pin people down in a magic school now. Mash rains down blow after blow to Margaret's head with his fist, the force pushes Margaret hard enough into the ground that it begins to violently crack, shatter and explode beneath him, breaking apart the arena floor. And as the crowd yells on, questioning if he is not going too far, Caldo recognizes that Mash is acting on instinct, because he recognizes something that the others don't. And as Mash is continuing to rain down blows, Margaret speaks up, speaking of how this is exactly what he was after. Something about his words spooks Mash enough into retreating from what was now a large dust cloud. From within it Margaret speaks, of how he will now show Mash what he is capable of as he casts sounds metamorphosis causing a torrent of sound, magical notes, and music paper to burst away from Margaret in massive waves. Caldo comments on how Mash was aware of Margaret's true strength, even if he didn't consciously recognize it, and Lance with what I assume is shocked, being taken aback recognizes what that spell was, a spell to unleash magic power. Perhaps it taps into hidden potential? Maybe it is something which brings forth the spellcaster's greatest power in exchange for a short duration. Either way the final scene of the chapter is a large pillar of either sound or light burst from the center of the arena and shooting up into the sky. So, it seems that this fight is going to be even more difficult for Mash than his fight against Carpaccio and he recognizes it given how even after sending Margaret flying he continued to go on the offense. If this fight can reach, it is natural conclusion I cannot see anyone else in the tournament being able to seriously challenge Mash on an offensive level, the only other challenge he would serious face is Lance who I presume would be on an emotional level rather than one on a combat level unless he has significantly advanced since Mash's last fight with him. Either way, I have been the anonymous weeb and I wish you a good day or night wherever you are out there in the world and beyond.